Welcome back to another video guys. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at Market Spotter and how you can actually amend the indicators as they are right now to better suit the bear markets and bull markets and other little edits that you can do for your preferences with our indicators. And in addition guys, there are updates currently coming with our indicators, but I'm not gonna share that in this video. Guys, if you are interested in Market Spotter, head over to marketspotter.io before we get started. You can see there are three indicators. There's a momentum-based indicator with buy and sell signals. There's a, a wave a trend indicator with buy and sell signals. And you gotta know your top and your bottom, your support and resistance. If you're unsure guys, go ahead, book a free call with Matty. He's our uh, consultant for Market Spotter. If you're unsure or you have any questions with the indicator, you can book an easy call through his calendar like so. It's really easy. Go ahead, contact Matty. But before that, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into the indicators. Thank you for joining me once again, guys. If you are new to the channel, go ahead, hit that like, subscribe, and tick that notification bell to stay up to date with any future videos. And once again, thanks for all the support. In today's video, guys, I'm gonna be jumping into Market Spotter and some of the edits that I'm doing with the indicators that you can also currently do that may help when it comes to bullish, bearish markets, and also just general design. So first, guys, what we can see here is that I'm on the Bitcoin and USDT chart on the daily, and we can see that we have Market Spotter version one. Now, Market Spotter version one is a momentum-based indicator. Now, the question is, well, what is a momentum-based indicator? If we jump over to Investopedia.com, guys, a really neat resource for anyone that wants to learn about technical analysis or anything to do with cryptocurrencies, we can see that momentum indicators are technical analysis tools used to determine the strength or weakness of a stock's price. Momentum measures the rate at which the rise or fall of stock prices Common momentum indicators include the relative strength index and moving average convergence divergence, the MACD. On that note, there are many other momentum indicators as well. But to understand momentum indicators, you can see that momentum measures the rate of rise or fall in stock prices in cryptocurrency in this case. From the standpoint of trending, momentum is a very useful indicator of strength or weakness in the issue's price. History has shown us that momentum is far more useful during rising markets than during falling markets. The fact that markets rise more often than they fall is the reason for this. In other words, bull markets tend to last longer than bear markets. With Market Spot at version one, we are going to be taking a look at exactly how we can prevent overextension of momentum based indicators. So with momentum-based indicators like your RSI or your MACD, they can overextend or they can kiss and bump with the signal in MACD line. And in this case, we can see that it is overextending. Why? Well, if we take a look at the price right here, this is prior bull run, our recent bull run. And now, as we know, momentum-based indicators work better in bull markets. So the question is with, with momentum-based indicator version one, market spotter version one, how do we prevent this ongoing strong sell signals when we could be taking advantage of this price action. What this is, guys, is this is a divergence in the price of this asset. We have a divergence in the price, but we also have a divergence in the indicators. The indicators are telling us, well, hey, get out, telling us with strong sell signals with the triangles, but we also have, as well, price increasing. So this is a divergence, and this is the start, or a good indication of a bull run. So the question is now, well, how do we prevent these strong sell signals when we could be taking advantage of a bull market price rising? Guys, this is easy. Typically, we know with the RSI that it is overbought at plus 60, you can see right here, and it is oversold at plus or minus 60 right here. And this is where we're getting this strong sell signals with Market Spotter version one. However, guys, this is a good indication that this bull market is about to take off. When we are seeing oscillators or RSI momentum based indicators, overextending repetitively. So if they are to overextend repetitively, we can see that perhaps we entered here at this caution buy, and then we got out at our first strong sell. Yes, 29.81% in 21 days, great. But cause we're signaling a bull market right here, and if you had any indication of that bull market rising, you can actually edit these indicators so you don't end up exiting trades at a 26% or 21% profit. You can actually maximize it. And the way we do this is by going over to the settings tab with version one. What we can see here is the periods in which these lines are crossing, but also we can see we can edit the overbought level. Now with an RSI based momentum indicator or most other momentum indicators, but especially with the RSI, 
it is overbought at plus 60. We can see this line correlates right here at plus 60. And every time we have a cross through the green through the red, it'll signal a strong sell. And we can see at this point, it was quite strong because it was blue, meaning there's lots of momentum with this movement, guys. But as we know, in a bull market especially, they perform better and RSI-based momentum indicators will overextend. Now guys, how do you get around this? Well, we know with RSI indicators in bull markets, they can be extended even up to 110 for overbought. Ideally, I like 80 to 90. And to give you an example how we could have avoided exiting early, even with a nice profit here on the start of this bull market, I can sit and edit my overbought level. So say I wanna edit version one right now, I can edit at 80. So I want this level of overbought, instead of being 60, it'll now be 80. If I click OK. So now what we can see is that the strong sell actually appeared here. And because of the overextension of oscillators when it comes to momentum based, especially the RSI in a bull markets, you can or you could have prevented the constant strong sells. So for instance, the buy was about here and the first strong sell was about here. So we had here to this strong sell here at this candle, 31%, not too bad, okay, cool. But guys, look, if we extended it to 80, knowing that we were potentially in a bull market breaking this prior big level of resistance here, we could have capitalized on this buy right here at this candle here, which by the way, they do flash blue. Okay, so we could have capitalized right here, say, and we would have gone all the way to this strong sell on this candle right here, guys. So there's 267% in 98 days. The reason why is because we just adjusted version one to the overbought level being at 80. Now this is subjective guys, and this is personally my preference as well, but this also is relevant to bear markets. You're going to see oscillators and RSI based momentum indicators overextend to the downside, though it's more common to the upside. So when it comes to bull markets guys or bear markets, you can adjust these settings. If you do want to adjust these settings in a bear market as well, this again is subjective guys, this is not financial advice, but you can then go ahead and go minus 80 for a strong buy on the oversold level. You will see now this bottom level will drop to uh, minus 80, meaning that anything that supersedes this minus 80 will then signal a strong buy. This may prevent, just like it did in this bull market here, benefiting better with your trades using version one. In addition with version one guys, you can also change the uh, momentum strength and the color. You can change also the length, the uh, moving periods, should you want to edit them as well. When it comes to the aesthetics of market spot at version one, you can also start editing your signals and your colors as well. So let's take a look at this weak buy here, this, this uh, blue circle, and we wanna change that to a diamond. We can do that quite easily like that. And let's go white, why not? You can do that easily on market spot at version one through going into this cog wheel right here. If you do wanna change the background color as to the strength of the trend of the movement, you can also do that as well. Moving on to market spotter version two guys. This is a wave trend indicator that will signal whether or not we are in an uptrend or a descending trend and at the same time, unbiasedly, dynamically pop up buy and sell signals, caution sells, caution buys, strong buys, strong sells. We can see the ideals here are buy low, sell high. You can see buy low, buy again, sell high, sell, buy, sell high, like this. You can also take it as a short. You want a short at a caution sell? Well, sure you can. Take your profits at your buy. That's your choice. This is subjective. This is market spotter version two. However, guys, with market spotter version two, you can also change your settings as well. Should you want to change the color of the tape? Don't fight the tape. Trade with the tape, meaning trade with the trend. Trend is your friend. You can change these colors as well. You have all your moving averages, your EMAs, MAs as well. But guys, I want to demonstrate to you one key tip that I enjoy using when it comes to Mark Spotter version two. This tip is not only being able to edit the colors of the caution cell, because I don't like the yellow so much. However, we have a show 200 moving average. Now, moving averages, guys, act as dynamic support and resistance. What that means is it's smooth to the period in which that moving average is. In this case, it's 200, okay? So that moving average is gonna move along the chart and the price candles are gonna dip up and down in between it, as you can see right here. This moving average right here, should you enable it at the cogwheel with version two, will act as a dynamic support and resistance and will confirm in certain circumstances 
where there is a level of support. So here we're looking for confluence, guys. Let me give you an example exactly what I mean by that. We can see right here, we have our moving average here. This is our 200. I've enabled it through the settings of MicroSpotter version 2. We had a strong sell. We had a confirmation that actually we were going in a descending trend now on the two hourly. We had a strong sell because we fell under this moving average and it confirmed it right here. Now we know that it acts as support and resistance and the price was underneath it, meaning that this is now a level of resistance. We had enough steam, we busted through, cool. What we can see guys is notice how the price approaches this 200 period moving average on market spot at version two. It actually finds support on this. It also finds support here, it finds support here, it attempts to find support here, fails, gives you a sell, comes down, finds support, comes down, finds support, and comes down again, busts through, we get a caution buy. Ideally what we're seeing here is confluence. We can see the moving average of 200 having confluence with the buy and sell signals, well, especially here, the buy with market spotter version two. As we approach, we know that it acts as support because it's dynamic and it's a moving average. And we can see that, okay, yep, the price come down, it touched this 200 period moving average. At the same time, this candle gave us a caution buy. And say you were to take this candle and you were to sell at this caution sell, there's 2.2% in one day and six hours. This is on the two hour chart, no leverage, of course. Guys, take your own trades, it's your choice. But we can see again, as we continue to come down onto this 200 period moving average, it is acting as support. It is supporting the price, as do any other moving averages. Guys, they are dynamic support and resistance. And this is one of the key tips I'm using with Market Spotter version two. It comes down again, we, we don't get a buy, but yet it does act as support and resistance. It comes down, we get a confirmation above the 200 period moving average. There's your confirmation buy right there. This is a big tip I'm using with Market Spotter version two, and I recommend perhaps checking it out as well. Moving on to Market Spotter version three, guys. These are some of the settings that I look for as well. What you can see is first, we can see a level of support that attempted to form right here, but it failed, okay? Now, what's the point of having this here if I'm currently trading these two zones right now? And the way around that, guys, you can see this as well was a level of resistance. You can see it was tested quite a lot of times as per the parameters I have set with version three. And we had the price absolutely smashed through this $24,000 range, which is great by the way, and is now forming a new level of resistance that is formed way back here. Now the question is, if you don't wanna see broken zones, that meaning, zones of levels of support or resistance that have been broken before, you can actually jump onto the cogwheel and click show broken zones. Simply untick that and you will see these broken zones will disappear. What that means now guys is the levels you see with market spot at version two and three are in play. These are your levels of support and resistance that have not been broken as per your time frame and your chart. You can see that we are trading this range right now of about six, 0.3% or you can see it right here. And the good thing about market spot of version three, it does demonstrate the percentage to the level of support or resistance should you tend to short or long a position as well. So that's something I'm doing with market spot of version three as well. In addition, you can change the number of bars in which will constitute a level of support or resistance. You can change the color, you can change the width of your boxes if you see fit as well. It makes it a bit fatter as well. You can change the color of the resistance zone should you want it to be white, you can change it to white as well. So there's a few tips I'm doing with Market Spotter version three as well. Guys, these indicators personally, as a personal opinion, I find it very good to have confluence between the three indicators themselves. If you're still unsure about Market Spotter or you have a few questions, we do have online chat agents as well as you can go ahead and book a call with Maddie. He's a nice guy as well. But guys, until then, I will see you in the next video.